or let's start today for fourth year medical student titles heart failure. Heart failure is a very common problem. It affects approximately 23% of adult population worldwide. Global burden of heart is growing and this burden expected to increase by 25% during the next 20 years. And the prevalence of heart is age dependent. It means that they, when increasing the age in general population, increase the prevalence of this disease. Uh, it is uh, more than, or, or about 22% in the people younger than 60 years old. While if it's older, more than 70, it reached about 10%. And in the primary care, a patient presented about 65 years old with a breathlessness, if follow it carefully, it will find one in six of unrecognized heart failure. It's a very poor prognosis. From a time of diagnosis of congestive heart failure, five years survival is still less than person. It's a most common cause for admission and it's a more common cause readmission to the hospital too for the people age 65 years old and old. It's a state heart failure is a state in which the heart cannot provide sufficient cardiac output to satisfy the metabolic needs of the body. And the, the, in the clinical, I mean the definition of this syndrome, I have a lot of definition. To anyone, it's a quite common. So it is American Heart Association defined as a clinical syndrome that can result from any structural or functional cardiac disorder that impair the ability of the ventricle to fill with or eject blood. This is, and the European Society of Cardiology define heart failure as a clinical symptoms, signs secondary to abnormal ventricular function. Heart failure broadly can be classified as systolic function leading to the enable to eject the blood and diastolic heart failure and diastolic heart failure leading to the defect in the ventricular filling. This is diastolic heart failure. And uh, this syndrome, I mean heart failure syndrome, classify according to the measuring left ventricular ejection fraction into the three broad categories. Those with the, the ejection fraction 50% or more was called heart failure with a preserved or normal ejection fraction half birth, while that the, those group with heart left ventricular ejection fraction less than 40% is the heart failure with reduced ejection fraction half birth. There is a mid-range group was called the gray area in which left, left ventricular ejection fraction between 40 to 49, which is called heart failure mid-range ejection fraction, F M R. So F R F heart failure with left ventricular ejection fraction less than 40 percent. F M R F heart failure with left ventricular ejection fraction between 40 to 49, while those preserved ejection fraction F B is a heart failure with the ejection fraction 50 and more. In the most of the studies, the incidence, or I mean, sorry, the prevalence of heart failure in both the group, HFF and HFF, nearly equal 50% of each. Heart failure classification. There is a functional classification and evolutional classification. Functional classification in the left of the screen is the a New York Heart Association, class one to four. Class one asymptomatic, class two symptoms with moderate exertion, class three symptoms with a minimal exertion, while the class four is asymptomatic at rest. A, B, C, D is the high risk structural with our disease, structural with disease and refractory heart failure. So the A is a high risk fact, no heart disease, no symptoms, while B heart, disease, no symptoms, I mean asymptomatic LV dysfunction, while C is the prior or current symptoms and heart failure symptoms, while D is a refractory heart failure. Re what this risk factor in A group? Hypertension, diabetes, hypercholesteremia, family history, cardiac toxin, 
while the heart disease, any heart disease with our system. While if you do investigation, you find LV dysfunction, systolic, and diastolic. While group C, usually they have symptoms, dyspnea, fatigue, refuse, exercise, intolerance, and D is a marked symptoms, even at rest with a maximal therapy. So if you plan treatment, A, you need to treat risk factors, avoid toxins, AC inhibitor in some patients. AC inhibitor, beta blocker in selected patients in group B, Y, C, it needs full uh, treatment and we uh, uh, include AC, IRBs, diuretics, digitalis, and so on. While D is a palliative therapy, need mechanical assistance, device treatment, even heart transplantation. Mortality year, uh, I mean mortality for one year, in, according to the New York Heart Classification, but class one, one year, five, ten percent more time. Class two, five, ten percent. While three and four is poor prognosis. The three reach 25 percent, and in a, and the class four reach more than 50 percent in one year mortality. It's a common in etiological causes. It's a common an endpoint of many disease of cardiovascular system. It can be caused by inappropriate workload, volume, pressure, restrictive filling or myocytes or loss, volume overload like regurgitant valve, pressure overload like hypertension, loss of muscle like post MI chronic ischemia, and restrictive filling like pericardial disease, restrictive cardiomyopathy, and tachyarrhythmia. In the study of heart failure, there is pathophysiological mechanism or adaptive mechanism, big hemodynamic change, neurohumoral change, and cellular change. The neurohumoral change increase sympathetic activity, running angiotensin system, RAS system activity, vasopressin, interleukin, and uh, uh, increase endothelium. This, this neurohumoral change and favorable effect and unfavorable effect. The favorable effect increase like sympathetic activity, increase heart rate, increase contractility, vasoconstriction, so increase venous return, increase cardiac output, but unfavorable effect arteriolar vasoconstriction and increase workload, afterload and workload and oxygen consumption. This is the same for running angiotensin system, lead to the salt and water retention, increase venous return, increase cardiac output, while that the unfavorable effect increase arteriolar vasoconstriction and afterload increase and so on for other adaptive mechanisms. While at the cellular level, there is change in the calcium handling, change in adrenergic receptor, and change in the contractile proteins, program cell death, and increased amount of fibrous tissue. Aggravating factor in the stable heart disease, these either medication, new heart disease, myocardial ischemia, Pregnancy, arrhythmias like atrial fibrillation, infection, thromboembolism, like pulmonary embolism, hypo and hyperthyroidism, endocarditis, toxicity, uncontrolled hypertension, physical activity, and the dietary excess. Symptoms mainly shortness of life. It's mentioned orthopnea, paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea. Low cardiac output leads to the fatigue and exercise intolerance while the abdominal symptom is due to the congestion, anorexia, nausea, vomiting, abdominal fullness, right hypochondrial pain. And physical sign, really there is a high diastolic and low systolic, which is called decapitated blood pressure, this is the phenomenon, decapitated blood pressure. JVB elevated, round inspiratory at the base of the lung, displaced and sustained apical impulse, there is a third heart sound, fourth heart sound, and peripheral sound, pale, cold, sweaty skin. Other forms of the heart failure, it may be systolic, diastolic heart failure, as we mentioned, high output heart failure, especially pregnancy, anemia, thyrotoxicosis, AB fistula, beriberi, badger disease of the bone. Low output failure, acute versus chronic, heart failure, right side versus left side. Right side really the most common cause is the left side and other pulmonary cause like pulmonary embolism, chronic pulmonary disease, other cause of pulmonary hypertension, RV infarction, mitral stenosis. Usually there is a congestion. 
lower limb edema, ascites, pleural effusion, hepatic congestion, cardiac cirrhosis, and long standing. Differential diagnosis of right side heart failure is a pericardial disease, liver disease, protic syndrome, renal failure, protein losing, and probiotic. In general examination in patients with heart failure, I'm investigation, anemia is common, hyper or hypothyroidism, chronic renal insufficiency, electrolyte abnormality, usually due to the use of diuretic, pre-renal azotemia, and hemochromatosis. ECG essential will find abnormal ECG, a likely heart failure with normal ECG, old MI, recent MI, arrhythmia, some form of cardiomyopathy, tachycardia related disease, the LV, left ventricular, left bundle branch block might help. The size of the heart and shape of the heart in chest x ray, evidence of pulmonary congestion and pleural fusion is, present, is quite essential. Echocardiography gives a lot of information in heart failure for functional and diagnostic record. Function of both ventricles, size of both ventricles, ejection fraction is fine, wall motion abnormalities, valvular abnormalities, intracardiac shunt, congenital anomalies, and so on. Cardiac catheterization is suspected valvular or coronary artery disease, or we decided for the cardiac transplant. This is that the chart we show how to diagnose heart failure. If we suspect on a clinic, this is a patient heart symptom, and so, or sign of heart failure, or both of them. So, do in the ECG, chest x ray, or BND, or pro BND. If it's normal, unlikely the patient has heart failure. If it's abnormal, so another investigation by imaging, echo-doppler, echo nuclear angiography, or uh, MRI, if available. If this investigation normal, unlikely the patient has heart failure, but it's abnormal, so, so we plan this heart failure, it's systolic diastole by echo study, identify etiology, evaluate severity, choose the proper therapy for the patient. It's quite essential to give a treatment patient with heart failure because the objective increase survival, decrease morbidity, increase exercise capacity, better quality of life, change in the neurohumoral change by receptor local, and decrease the progression to congestive heart failure and the decrease of symptoms. Treatment may line all patients they need prevention control of risk factor, lifestyle modification treat etiological cause and aggravating factors, drug therapies and personal care and team group and rehabilitation. While in selected cases might need revascularization of ischemic cause, ICD, implantable cardiac defibrillator, ventricular resynchronization, ventricular assistant device, heart transplant, artificial heart, and some people might need uh, I mean gene therapy. And this is the, the important guideline. We follow it in the treatment. This is my European Society of Cardiology. If the patient with symptom heart failure, suppose have rest. So to start with AC inhibitor or IRB and beta blocker, start simultaneous, increase the dose gradually. AC inhibitor is quicker than the beta blocker is more slower. Over weeks until reach maximum effective dose. Start with AC inhibitor if the patient can't tolerate the, then IRB. If the patient, in spite of adequate proper dose, still symptoms with the low ejection fraction less than 35, add mineralocorticoid uh, antagonist like the, the spironolactone. If the patient is still uh, uh, the barrier, uh, the barrier of mineralocorticoids, so renal failure, or so and problem of hyperkalemia. If the patient is still symptomatic, with the ejection fraction less than 35, and able to tolerate ACIRB, so change to the nebulizing inhibitor. And the, in the case of acute heart failure or the congestive symptom, use of diuretics. These diuretics, loop diuretics or the thiazide or thiazide like diuretic, but if ejection fraction less than 35, use loop diuretics. And these diuretics keep it as short as we can and uh, minimal effect. 
active tumors. Therefore, it's not affect the mortality and morbidity. In selected patients, lay ventricular ejection fraction less than 35, despite optimal medical treatment and some form of the history of symptomatic ventricular tachycardia, VF, and other so ICD will put in the patient. And then uh, uh, another line of treatment, correction of reversible cause, ischemia, valvular heart disease, thyroid dysfunction, chunk arrhythmias like atrial fibrillation, flutter, junction arrhythm, medication, uh, calcium chain blocker sometimes used, some antiarrhythmic, and the aspirin and the lipid lowering agent. And salt restriction, fluid restriction, daily weight, and gradual exertion program and the, the main drug used, diuretic AC inhibitor, IRDs, and other drugs. One point before the end of the lecture, some drugs are effect on mortality, morbidity, and system. These drugs, AC inhibitors, IRDs, beta blocker, and mineralocorticoids, like spironolone. Other drugs, digitalis, diuretic, calcium channel blocker, positive inotrope, have a symptomatic relief, but no effect on the mortality and morbidity. See you soon. Thank you for uh, participation in this lecture.